Let me help you understand everything that Stephen A. Smith was completely, entirely wrong about. And, and, and he keeps repeating the same thing over and over again. He, he has a, It's like a kid that gets a little bit of information. When they learn something new, they run around town talking about this new thing. It's like he just discovered that the Republican Party, the larger percentage of the Republican Party, voted for the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of 1964 and 1965 compared to that of the Democratic Party. So it was, it was carried on the backs of the Republican Party. It's like he just found this out. This is news to him. Congratulations, Stephen A. Smith. You learn a little bit of political history. But this is where your knowledge is lacking. Because if you honestly think for one second that the Republican Party of today is the same Republican Party that voted in the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of 1964 and 1965, then you are sorely mistaken. So, Be Stephen... Do, how many we, how many ways and how many different languages, how many different examples do I need to give you to help you to understand? Two things. The Republican Party that you dream about is not the same party that voted in the Civil Rights Act. The, the Republican Party that you dream about, you have a dream, Stephen, and you have a dream that one day we'll all vote for the Republican Party. Go to hell because it's not going to happen. Just like my glorious Miami Heat. When I think of Stephen A. Smith and I think of sports, I think of my Miami Heat. And I think of, yes, I'm a Miami Heat fan in Boston. So what? Get over it. I think about the possibility of a three-peat for Miami Heat. And then I wake up and I realize it ain't going to happen. So, Stephen, this, this misguided history that you have, it's a lack of knowledge, brother. You just don't know. That's like me trying to tell you. I can't even give you an ex I'm so uninformed with sports that I can't give you an example of how wrong you are in sports jargon. That's how, that's how much I don't know. And I think you are equally as uninformed in the political historical spectrum because you're just, you keep saying the same thing twice. I tweeted you, a, a, I tweeted you an infographic like, like uh, six months ago. No, it was like two years ago. When, the last time you publicly said this stupid stuff about the Republican Party. I tweeted you. You obviously didn't read my tweet. <laughs> you obviously didn't read my tweet. I, I guess because maybe I had like 25 followers at the time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have read my tweet. You, how can you credit this party today with what was done in the 60s when the party today is in opposition of what was done in the 60s? <laughs> it just... It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It does not equate. It does not compute. It does not follow. They are not the same party. Just like one of the biggest things that bother me is when the Republican Party tries to assert that they are the party of Lincoln. Just because Lincoln had an R by his name. He was a Republican. And so they claim they are the party of Lincoln. How do you think President Lincoln would feel about being aligned with a party that still glories and basks in the old glory of the Confederacy. The problem is, is that Stephen A. Smith has bought into this narrative that the only reason black people are voting with the Re Democratic Party is for race issues because we think the Republican Party is racist. Now, I'm not going to lie. One of the main reasons they will never get our vote, even though they could easily get our vote, and I'll deal with that later, why they could easily get the black vote. But one of the reasons they never will is because of the Southern strategy. I'm not just going to say racism, but it's the brilliance of the Southern strategy, first instituted by Richard Nixon and then mastered by Ronald Reagan, brought back more recently against President Obama. The Southern strategy. That's one of the reasons we, we would never vote more than 15 percent. I'm surprised they got 15 percent. <laughs> Good luck with that. And so Stephen A. Smith has bought into this idea that the reason blacks, the only reason blacks could vote with the with the Democratic Party or the only reason we're not is because uh, we're on. There's this phrase that we're on the plantation of the Democratic Party.
And they tried to cast that in light of, um, you know, the fact that the Klan was born out of the Democratic Party and that the, the Democratic Party opposed segregation. And so they feel like they're really doing something. To every black conservative that feels like you're doing something when you assert that black people are voting for the Republican Party beca uh, because we're, we're on the plantation of the Democrats, um, <laughs> how can I say this without being, shut up, because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. That's really the only way I can say it. You need to really learn something beyond what your plantation masters taught you. Black conservatives and Republicans in general try to assert the notion, they really have bought into this idea that African Americans are unable to see through the bull of the Republican Party. As if we need somebody to carry us by the hand and show us who we need to vote for. And because, oh, the, the Democrats make the Republicans look like racists, we'll never leave the comfort and the care of the Democratic plantation. That says, like my, my favorite, favorite thinker, James Baldwin, what you say about us reveals more about you than it ever would reveal about us. Your assertion that blacks only vote with the Democratic Party because um, because we're we're in bondage or whatever, and that we need them, we need the we're, we need the care and the comfort. You're, you're stripping us of our agency. You're you're attempting to strip us of our agency as though we don't have the ability to make decisions beyond. This is what you're really saying when you say stupid stuff like that. You, you're really saying that you don't believe that blacks are capable of making decisions beyond race. So because you believe that, Stephen A. Smith, because you believe that, Alan West, because people like uh, Herman Cain and, and Ben Carson, they believe that. Let me give you all of the reasons or just a few of the reasons why blacks would never vote with the Republican Party, even though we could. We really could. Because one thing you know about black folks, or one thing you should know about us, is that we're conservative. We are socially conservative beings. I am one of the most socially conservative people you will ever meet for my personal self, for my personal life. If we got pregnant by mistake today, an abortion is not an option for my family. A, th a third job is. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I, I go to church as you know, I'm, as much as I can, I try to get there. You know, it's not as easy in Boston. Not a lot of you know churches I'm comfortable with up here. If you know one, please let me know. I, we pray. We're religious. Black folks are religious. You know, black folks in general oppose gay marriage. So they're right eye and eye with, with the Republican Party there. I mean, black folks, um, it's just so many things that we're socially conservative about. You know, the, the difference is twofold. Those issues are not strong enough to overcome the social and economic reasons we oppose the Republican Party. And two, the majority of black people have thought about this thing enough to realize that even though we may be socially conservative, we can't force somebody else to be that. And see, they want to strip us of that agency. They don't they don't want us to believe they don't want you to believe that we've actually sat down and thought about how is it that we can be um, uh, uh, for traditional family values, but still go to a protest and stand next to an LGBT rally at an LGBT rally and support them. You know how we do it? Because we want the freedom and the autonomy to live our lives however the hell we want to live our lives. And what does it look like if we try to strip that away from someone else? See, that's too much nuance for Republicans. That's too much. That's they don't want to think beyond. Uh, they don't want to think beyond the simplicity of their anger. They don't want to think beyond the simplicity of black and white. Seeing living in the gray is too complicated for them. But black folks have had to live in the grave for many generations. And so critical analytical thought is nothing for us. Because we've had to do it all the time. W.E.B. Du Bois in, the, in his book, The Soul of Black Folks, he was talking about the dichotomy of what it is to be a black living in America, to be a black American. It's a split dichotomy. You have two entirely different sides of your life. And anytime you have two entirely different sides of your life, you are forced to, to, to struggle and grapple with ideas in your head that are seemingly contradictory and you find a resolution. But thought like that, things like that, 
things like that are like are too complicated for the minds of conservatives. And I guess black conservatives are just taking the intellectually easy way out. So coming full circle, we may be as African-Americans socially conservative, but we're not trying to the majority of us, at least 85 percent, because the 15 percent that vote with the Republican Party, uh, something, you know, that's them. But the vast majority of African-Americans, we are socially conservative, but we're not trying to force anyone else to live according to our guidelines. Because we want the freedom and the autonomy to live our lives the way we want to live our lives. How would it look for me to try to um, to 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 want to live my life and teach my kids what I teach them and raise them the way I want to raise them? And I'm constantly trying to stop someone else to have of having the same privilege. What does that look like? That that's that looks like hypocrisy. That's what it looks like. And so we could vote for the Republican Party because we're socially conservative. But we are also vastly familiar with what happened underneath Reagan, Bush one and Bush two. We know the effects of trickle down economics. We know the effects that that economic system had because we were, we were disproportionately affected by it. See, Republicans look back at Ronald Reagan with these glorious, fond memories that it was such a good time. Because it was a good time if you were living off of capital gains. It was a good time if you didn't have to go to work to make your money. But for the rest of us who had to go to work, it was the worst of times. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. A tale of two cities, clearly. And we have had two Americas ever since. And so not so much Bush one. Bush one wasn't in there long enough except for the, uh, to the Gulf War. That's about all he was there for. And, and he made some good presidential decisions. He made some good decisions on the need to raise taxes to recover us from the foolishness that was Reaganomics. And that's why they didn't vote him back in. He paid the price. And thank you for being a responsible president. It cost you your presidency, right? You set it up for Bill Clinton. And we had some good days during Bill Clinton because the middle class grew. Economic prosperity grew. But we saw as soon as Bush, too, came into office. We know we our, our minds are not we are not as easily fooled by propaganda as black conservatives and as Republicans and conservatives in general. And so we know who was responsible for the, the fall of the economy. And so we know that at the end of the Bush administration, billions of dollars of black wealth was completely erased because African-Americans generally built their wealth through their homes. And in the mortgage crisis that came in 2008, black wealth was wiped out. Billions of dollars was wiped out. So now there is a litany of reasons why blacks should never vote for the Republican Party, Stephen A. Smith. But in your inept mind, I think you're brilliant on the political on the sports spectrum. I, you know, I'm not just going to call you an idiot, but politically and historically, you need to get an education, man. Stop letting people put you up in public and stop running your mouth. You are not the big dog of politics. You are the big dog of sports. And you need to stay in that lane or. Come listen to the Benjamin Dixon show and let me learn you something, young buck. Because we have a list of reasons why we should never vote. The, we know the hawkish nature of neoconservative foreign policies. Do you even know what, neocon, what a neocon is? We know the effect of Republican foreign policy. And we know that it is not good for America. We know the extent to which the Republican Party has gone to new heights to defame and to pull apart the sitting president. And we don't care so much that he's black. I'm lying. We do care. <laughs> Let me stop lying. You know, we do care that he's black and you're being uber disrespectful to him. But you're also being so you're so you hate President Obama so much that you're willing to destroy the office of the presidency. And that's all the more reason for us to never vote for you. So, Stephen, do, how, many we, how many ways and how many different languages, how many different examples do I need to give you to help you to understand? Two things. The Republican Party that you dream about is not the same party that voted in the Civil Rights Act. 
the, the Republican Party that you dream about. You have a dream, Stephen, and you have a dream that one day we'll all vote for the Republican Party. Go to hell because it's not going to happen. Just like my glorious Miami Heat. I don't think they'll ever get, they'll ever get a three-peat um, in my 30s. Maybe in my 40s. And if they, they're not going to get it with Dwayne Wade. That's the way I, that's so what I, Stephen A. Smith, you know as much about political history as I know about sports history. I don't know anything beyond 1988 and the franchising of the Miami Heat. That's where political history, that's where sports history starts for me. And apparently your political knowledge, your history, political history starts at whatever time Sean Hannity shared some facts with you. But let me help you out. The Republican Party today is an anathema, is the complete antithesis of what the Republican Party was in the 1960s. 